virtual TI here. Okay, so what, what I'm what we're looking at here is let's put that function in there using our good old uh, triple X notation <laughs> plus one. Uh, if we're looking at this interval, let's just put that interval in there. So let's go one to two. Isn't that a really small interval? You could put point one. It doesn't matter what your scale is. Uh, I'm not sure what we need vertically here, but x cubed, we probably need higher values than this. If we're going up to two, two cubed plus one is nine, so we should probably go negative two to ten or something like that. Okay, so this is part of the graph of that. Okay, so this is x cubed between there. Did I did I mean negative two? I don't know what I'm thinking here. No, that's okay. This is good. This is good enough. You can see it well enough here. We could actually go zero to. We should go zero so that we. Why is it starting at? Oh, because we're starting at one. I'm getting confused. Never mind. Okay, there's our there's our uh, graph, right? That's from don't. This is not zero. This is one. In that interval, the average slope between those two things, the average slope between those two things is what? Let's draw the picture here. We've got at uh, at one we have what was the value? One cubed is that plus so it's two, and then at two it's nine. So way up here, if I'm doing it to scale, it's something like this even though it's not really. <laughs> trying to uh, exaggerate it so I can show this. The average slope between these two things here, average slope, or in other words, f at 2 minus f at 1 over 2 minus 1, is 9 minus 2 over 2 minus 1, 7. There is a point in between there somewhere where the slope is 7. All right? Somewhere in between there the slope is 7. If we want to find that point, we could sit here and trace somehow, you know, like you could use GeoGebra because then you could dynamically move the slope of the line. But if we're using this, we're going to find it analytically here. We want to know where is the derivative equal to 7. Okay, so we want to know this. At what point is this derivative equal to 7 here? We're going to call that point C the way they did. Okay? Now, I didn't draw it so it looks parallel, but it should. F prime of x is 3x squared, right? Yes. Now, we want to know where is 3x squared equal to 7. And it instead, I, instead of x, I'm going to put c in there because my point c is where where the derivative is is 7 right let c equal x value where x value where f prime is 7 okay that's why i'm putting a value of c in there right if I put x here, it's not always 7, but it, I mean, that's a finer point. It doesn't matter. c squared is 7 thirds. c is plus or minus square root of 7 thirds. Or in other words, if you want an approximate value here. Absolutely, yeah. The, the negative is going to be in the other side, right? The graph would actually, the graph actually looks like this. So there's one point here where the slope is at. And there's one point on the other side where the slope is at. So we only we only care about the plus side. Okay, it's not in this one to two here. If you find the value on your calculator, 
unless you can do square root of seven thirds on your uh, in your head. One point five two one point five two eight is probably good enough. Approximately equal to one point five two eight. I would like you if you haven't already started using the approximately equal to sign when you round stuff off, that would be good. If you want to confirm it graphically, go to your calculator and draw the tangent line here. You could actually, even if you wanted to be really tricky here, store this as C. Okay, and then you can, when you're on your graph here, remember that you can draw the tangent line. Go down to draw the tangent. If you want to confirm that you've got it right, draw the tangent at, I think you can enter a point. I don't know if you can actually do recall that value. Like you can, you could put something in here, like two, or you could, I think, go recall, recall. I don't know if you actually have to say recall C. You could just hit C. Is it gonna work? Whoa, whoa, whoa! So then you check the slope is seven there, right? That's that value. Remember that this is just. This is just calculator error, like it does just the inaccuracy of the the algorithms they're using to do this. This doesn't mean the slope is actually this, right? That's the best it can do. Second draw, yeah, above program. That's just confirming that graphically. Remember what I mean the the front of the textbook says graphical, numerical analytical that's the point of this right if you wanted to do this numerically if you wanted to check you could set up a table you could actually graph the derivative here and you could say what was the derivative 3x squared and then you could set up a table here and you could put in points and say I want to look between if I want to confirm my value that I found 1.52 I could say whoops go from 1.5 up to 1.6 by 0.1s. And then you could look at the table. Remember that this is the derivative here. So it's 7 in between there somewhere. You could make the table more accurate in between there if you wanted. You could set up the table and say go from uh, go from 1.52 up to 0 .0, up by 0 0.01s. You could look at the table and you could see at somewhere there 1.52 and 1.53 at 7. You can confirm your what you're doing several different ways to see what's going on. Okay?